Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd It's legislated for the believer and from taqullah azza wa jal because it is following the commandments of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have suhoor to have breakfast before you begin to fast so it's important to strive your best to even if even if it's a little bit of water and some dates something very simple you should strive to have that in the in the morning and also strive to reflect upon how many of our brothers and sisters and how many muslims and non-muslims around the world because most of the world is 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 in poverty the reality is most of the world is in severe poverty if you look at most of the african nations severe poverty the masses most of asia severe poverty even in the biggest nations in india and china the masses are in there's devastating poverty there and disease and struggle so when you think about when you try to to take your suhoor when you have your suhoor and also remind yourself when you're breaking your fast of that great benefit of the food that you have those ni'ma those ni'am min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those great blessings that Allah has provided you with food to where you're able to eat many t- different types of food i was just reflecting when we broke our fast yesterday i went to the masjid they gave me a plate of food my sons had plates of food and we had other food that we had at home and we had different kind of fruits we didn't eat even a portion of that and so many people would love to just even have that date can you imagine a person who actually starves to death or the many people who suffer from malnutrition and even during this holy month of ramadan so be thankful to allah and strive to use the blessings he gives you to assist others with take advantage of that ni'ma that Allah has given you also given sadaqa this is a month of sadaqa and this is a reminder for myself and others to give in charity but let's get to the matter of hand i wanted to speak about suhoor and read a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding that the hukum of eating suhoor an anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tasahharu فإن في سح في سحور بركة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as was narrated by Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said عليه الصلاة والسلام to سحروا. He said he ordered us with taking سحور with having something before you fast like a breakfast. For verily سحور for verily within سحور is بركة. is 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 uh blessings so we don't want to miss the blessings the point of ramadan we want to gain taqwa we want to gain blessings we want to gain reward and ajr from allah so strive your best if nothing else before fajr comes in to have a couple of dates and try to do witr just to be on the sunnah try to eat have one or three or five or or seven or whatever else is an odd number and have some water or something Well, the point is to have suhoor because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered with that and we know that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or or his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam when they order us with something the asl of that is that it's a it's a an obligation so we know that at least the minimal is having suhoor is mustahab he didn't order it on the wajh of 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 uh of uh he didn't order this upon us in a way that would necessarily illustrate that it's an obligation but he said have it because in it is baraka is blessings what we gain from this Sheikh Ali Bassam Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala may Allah bless him with jannah to firdaus he said one of the things he said that we gain from this hadith He said 
the recommendation or that it is istahbab uh, to have suhoor. And that this is an action, a sharia action, to do so. Because the Prophet ﷺ commanded this. So strive your best to have suhoor. Another benefit of this, meaning that you'll get ajr for it, and if you leave it, you will not be punished. Another benefit of this hadith is that there's barakah in the, in the suhoor. And there, it is not something that we should uh, we should miss. We should strive our best to, to gain that blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gain, gain those, that barakah. Another blessing of this hadith, or another uh, benefit of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is that we should also not strive to make the suhoor a very long, long thing as some of the people and some of the sects in Islam that they uh, strive to do. Because that is not necessarily from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, strive your best to have suhoor. And in another hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us when we should have suhoor, metta suhoor. An Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal, tasaharna ma Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thumma qama ila salat. Qala Anas, kultu li yuzid, kam kana bayna al-adhan wa suhoor, qala qadra khamsin ayah. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. So this is very important here. This hadith right here illustrates for us that suhoor, the time for suhoor should be very close to the fajr time. This is the best. If you want to really get the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it should be close to the time you're going to begin to fast. Unlike the Sufiya, that some groups and sects of Sufis, they believe that suhoor should be like iftar. But rather, this hadith illustrates for us that between the suhoor and the salat is about, uh, and the adhan of fajr is about 50 ayat. So this hadith, uh, the, uh, this was a hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that Zayd bin, bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, We had suhoor with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he stood up for prayer. And then Anas said to him, he said to Yazid, he said, how much time was it between the Adhan and suhoor, and you know, in taking this breakfast? He replied, Yazid replied, There was 50, about the time enough to read 50 ayats of the Qur'an. And this was in Bukhari and Muslim. So this gives us an idea about the length of time between suhoor and the adhan. Some of the benefits we gain from this is that this hadith illustrates for us that it is better to delay your suhoor until you're very close to the time for the adhan of fajr. You know, that it should be closer to that time. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith illustrates for us that Salat al-Fajr, you should strive to make Fajr in its earliest time. That's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is because it should be close to the time of Imsak, the time that you, you, uh, you, you stop eating. So it just goes to illustrate for us that the walk to Fajr, it should be, we should pray Fajr in its closest time, if we can, bi idnillah ta'ala, when it comes in, even as a jama'ah in the masajid, we should align our times in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Also from this hadith, this hadith illustrates for us that the time for restraining from eating is when tulul, uh, tulul al-Fajr. 
is when Fajr begins. That's when we have to stop eating. Those are some of the benefits of this hadith. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.